Hi hey guys, Changro here, and welcome to Valhalsia 5. This is episode 17, and in this episode, we are going to look at Batania. You can see behind me a bunch of Batania stuff there. We did some of this on stream, but we're going to start right at the beginning to get a full understanding of what Batania is all about. Then later, we're going to automate with some create stuff, build some structures. We got some cool stuff planned, so stick around. Let's head over there, but let's do that via this direction. And take a look at our our mob farm that we've been building on stream. Definitely check out the stream. We stream every week, and we've been collecting every mob in Valhelsia 5 and putting them in the zoo. Come stop by the stream and see what we're catching next. All right, here is where we are starting in on Batania. I've found a bunch of automation with it, kind of experimenting with it. We'll get to that later. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, we just need to start from the beginning. First of all, there's a book, The Lexic of Batania. You craft that with a sapling and a book, and you get it for free, I think, when you get start a new Valhalsia 5 game in the Akashic Tome. So definitely, you're going to want to read through this. There's a ton of stuff to go through. There's also a lot of locked content. So we need to progress before you can see what the later stuff is, so, which kind of makes it a little bit difficult to see where we're going. So let's just quickly talk about that before we get before we get into it. If we take a look at the Batania items, you can see we've got a bunch of flowers. We're going to start with the apothecary, mana spreaders, all sorts of things here. But where are we going with this? Batania is really a deep mod with a ton of stuff, some really cool things in it, like these rods, Rod of the Highlands, Rod of the Terra Firma. They help you with terraforming. Um, there's a bunch of really great later game tools and armor, like this Terra Steel Helmet, Terra Shatterer, which is this OP pickaxe. There's also things like these bands and rings, a Flugel Terra, which gives you creative flight. These are late game stuff, but this is where we're headed. And we need to go through all of the early game crafting, lots of different crafting methods to get all the stuff here. Um, it could be very grindy and, and manual, and that's why I want to automate as much as I can with Create. And we're going to have fun with integrating Create with Batania. Let's take a look, for example, at the Flugel Tiara and what it takes to make that. We have we need four Gaia Spirits, and the Gaia is a boss, an end game boss for Batania, so we're not going anywhere near that. Um, in the short term. Uh, in addition to that, we need to craft things like Elementium. And to get Elementium, we put Mana Steel in a, an Elven trading portal. What? We need to create a portal and we throw things in there and the Elves on the other end trade with us and give us different things for the things we throw through it. So it, there's just there's really fun crafting mechanics in this, in this mod. Uh, taking a look at some of these other things, um, Terra steel. We need to craft on uh, a terrestrial agglomeration plate. This is another crafting table. We throw these things like mana pearl, diamond, and mana steel ingot on there, and it makes and it makes terra steel for us. We get a mana diamond by putting a mana in a pool, a diamond in a pool of mana, um, which is just kind of another crafting method that we that we need to deal with. To get mana, we need a mana pool. To get a mana pool, we need living rock. To get living rock, we got to put stone around a pure daisy. To make a pure daisy, we need to put petals in a petal apothecary. So we kind of backed all the way out to the beginning here, and this is exactly where we're going to get started. So let's do it. First thing you're going to want to do to get started on Batania is get yourself some mystical flowers. You can find these around the world. They're pretty easy to find. All my chunks near my base have, were generated before Batania was added, so I have to go pretty far to find them. But fortunately, you don't have to go anywhere. So rather than go hunting, you can just craft some floral fertilizer with some dye and bone meal. And just hit the ground with it. And just keep doing that until you get all 16 colors. So easy as that. Those went into my flower pouch, which is something you can make. And if you're running around the world and collecting flowers, there's you know a lot of them and they fill up your inventory quickly. So that makes that easy. So here's that gray flower that I just got and pink flower, green flower. So the flower pouch is useful for that, but we're not exploring. So we don't really need that. 
Now, when you break a mystical flower, you get that, and you can turn it into two petals. If you break a tall flower, you get four petals. Mm -hmm. And then you can replant them by just right-clicking with the... Oh, I didn't pick up some of these. Where did I put that? Right there. You can see the particles. And then you fertilize it with bone meal, and it grows back as double high flowers. You break those. You get talls. Oh, I went into the flower pouch. Here they are. And then those two tall flowers turn into eight petals. So it's really easy to just get, just keep regenerating petals from one flower. So as long as you have one flower around, you can get back to getting all the petals that you want. Now let me show you the first automation that I made. This is my petal, my petal quadrupler here. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. I made this with create. You put stuff in this barrel right here, petals. So if I put, let's put these 15 red petals in here. And this is going to turn into 60 red petals from this machine. It's going to go up here. Going to go up into this belt funnel. Oh, that, that was there for a reason. To keep things from dropping off the end if, if things got overflowed. Um, they'll go in here. Which gets, which causes them to get picked up by these deployers. So this deployer here has shears on it. This deployer over here is configured with, to pick up only petals, and this one over here bone meals it. And we've not got very much bone meal in here. There's 17. So if we throw some bone meal in here and some petals. That'll send them over here, get picked up by these deployers, and let's turn it on and watch it work. So here come the petals up the belt with the bone meal. They go in here. The red petals went to the deployer that plants it. Another one bone meals it, and another one shears it. Now those things get dropped back out here with a filter that drops out flowers. Those get processed. And as long as we have enough shear and an, the shear breaks, so as long as that doesn't break on us, we'll end up with 60 petals from the 15 that we put in there. Let's see, here we go. All right, heading back up here, let's get started with the petal apothecary. I've got one right here. They're pretty easy to make, just some cobblestone and any petal. And you can make one of those. You put it down here and you fill it with water. So I've got a water bucket. We fill it with water and then we drop petals into it. And so we need to make that daisy, which is just four white petals in the apothecary. And we also need some seeds. So just let me grab some seeds first. And we throw the petals in here. We literally throw them. And you can see them kind of floating around in there. And we got this heads up display that says that it's ready to go. And now we just throw some seeds on there. And boom, we've got a pure daisy. And I already had one. So now we've got two. And the water goes away. So we need to refill it with water a water bucket for the next operation, which is why I want to automate that. And I've got a system over there that automates the filling of the apothecary. We'll do that. We'll do that later once we have our more permanent home for our Batania stuff in our in our Batania building. So let's continue on. Let's put a couple of these down here. And if we put them two apart, we can surround them with stone and logs like this. And you can see when we put down stone, you see particles around it. It has to be adjacent to it on the same level as it, and it will turn stone into living st rock, and it'll turn logs into living wood. And this takes about a minute, I think, for this process to happen. And here they go. Now the logs will start to turn. Let 
and we mine those and put down more stuff. And so during the beginning, uh, very beginning of Batania, I just place stone and logs and just replace them, mine them and replace them just whenever I think of it, just, just so we can have a constant supply of it. Another thing that's very manual and very tedious and we're going to use create to automate that as well and we're going to need a ton of living rock for our building that we've got planned all right the next thing we need is mana and for mana we need a mana pool and let's we've got one already the recipe for a mana pool is just five living rock like in the shape of a boat we put that down this is all temporary so let's just stick it right right here why not um, to fill a mana pool, we need a generating flower. And the book tells us all about generating flora. And there's different kinds of them, and they do different things to generate mana. And the early early ones are endoflame and hydrangeas. And the hydrangeas are just made with blue, light blue and dark blue petals. And they consume water to they suck up any still water in a 3x3 three three area. But those break, those flowers break. Uh, the endoflames don't break, and they're a bit so they're a bit better. And I think they even generate more mana. And so this is where we're going to go. We're going to make an endoflame. It basically consumes any burnable item nearby and turns it into mana. So we need an endoflame. I've got one of these, but let's craft one. We need two brown, one red, and one light gray petal. And we've got these light gray, brown, and red. Oh, and we need water. I should probably get a water source over here. One, two, one, one, and seeds. Did I do that wrong? Oh, I didn't put red petals, I put red flowers. I can just right click with an empty hand to pull something out. There we go. And now it just wants some seeds. And we've got a end an endoflame. And we'll put the endoflame down right here. In order for the endoflame to send mana into the mana pool, we need a mana spreader. Uh, that's pretty easy to make. Right here. We just need some living with logs, gold, and a petal. We've got, we've already got a mana spreader here. We just made another one. That's fine. We will need a lot of those. And we also need a wand of the forest, which we have already. But let's just take a look at that recipe because it's interesting to see that you can use any different colors of petals and you'll get different colors on the flowers on your wand. So that's, so that's pretty neat. So we've got the wand, so we need to put a mana spreader down between somewhere between the endoflame and the mana pool, so we'll put it right here. And we need to link, you can see that it's not linked to anything, you see the red X there. So if we shift right click, and then shift right click on the spreader, it links the flower to the spreader, and you can see there's a check mark there now. And we need to link the mana spreader, same way, shift right click, to the mana pool shift right click and now you can see it's aimed at it and if we put down a piece of charcoal the end of flame will eat the charcoal burn it and with the wand we can see kind of what's going on here it's filling up with mana from the end of flame that's connected to it and it shoots it into the mana pool which is now filling up with mana we can put down another end of flame say right here it linked if you place the flower second it will link to the ne a nearby spreader automatically and if we throw down some more charcoal then we can see things are filling up a bit faster and we just keep throwing down charcoal 
and these things will consume it. You don't want to throw down too much because then you'll it'll despawn and you'll lose it. So again, pretty manual process. Now we can automate this, which we did over here. You can put a here we have a setup with a open crate which just drops items and the pressure plate will only allow because there's a hopper over here the hopper's locked when it's got redstone on it and when there's something sitting on the pressure plate it locks the hopper so another item doesn't drop out we've got this filled with charcoal blocks it's locked right now because the pool is full and it's sending out a, a 15 signal when it's completely full, which we have 15 redstone wires over here so that the it finally gets down to power one and powers the repeater. If I break this, you'll see it puts out a charcoal block and then the pressure plate powers the, the hopper. So this setup right here stops the dispensing of charcoal blocks whenever either there's something sitting on the pressure plate or the pool is full. So we'll put that on over here. We're going to set this up in our Batania base as well. But let me see if I can give you a good look at this so you can maybe repeat this yourself. The important thing is that this block is right next to the hopper to lock it. If there's any redstone coming from either a comparator or the pressure plate. And there's a repeater right here to kind of break, isolate these two signals from each other. Okay, let's take a look at some of the things you can make with Batania. Um, and in doing so, we'll also get a look at the runic altar. What I want to do is take a look at a couple of things here. One is this ring of magnetization. So there's lots of rings in Batania, uh, lots of wearable uh, trinkets or, or rings and things like that. We need some mana steel, uh, and we need a mana lens, which is more mana steel, I guess, and some glass. So to get mana steel, we need to throw some iron into a mana pool, just like this. And I already had some uh, mana steel from, I got it from a loot chest, I think, on stream in a dungeon. So now I've got eight mana steel ingots, and... Let's let's see if we can we can craft these things. So we need this lens. Just get some glass and four mana steel. We'll just stick that back in in there. And now the magnetizing lens we can make. And finally the ring itself. And now we just put the ring into a ring slot like this. And now we have throw some stone around and we can see this and we can see this thing working so we get a bit more range on our our picking things up so that's pretty cool it'll also drag like extra things around if our inventory is full so that's that's also pretty neat great for exploring all right so the next thing i want to look at is this rod of the lands now for this we need a rune of earth for that, we need a runic altar, um, and for that, we need a mana diamond and some living rock. Uh, we've got a runic altar right here, but to make a mana diamond, that is the same way as we made mana steel. we got to hit the pool, though. And now we've got this mana diamond. But we've already got one, so I'm not going to craft another one. Let's just put it down right over here. And now the runic altar is powered with a with a mana spreader. And so we'll just put this right here. And right shift right click, shift right click. And now it's aiming at the runic altar. And to make this, we need a rune of earth, which needs some mushrooms, mana powder, mana steel, stone, and a block of coal. I don't know if we can use a charcoal block for that. Maybe. Let's try it. Uh, we need some redstone. Some mana powder. So we've got the mana powder right here. We 
We can either throw it on, I think, or right click. Yep, throwing it works too. We're gonna steal mushroom. Coal char charcoal block doesn't work. We need a coal block. Okay, coal block, mana powder, stone, red mushroom, and mana steel. There we go. And now the mana starts to flow, and we can see over there the clock is kind of ticking on creating that rune. As long as we have enough mana in our pool, which we seem to, this thing will finish. And now the next step is to take a living rock and put it in the middle of the altar. Again, I just right click or we can throw it and then right click with the wand of the forest. And now we have these two runes of earth. And now we can make, we just need a living wood twig. There we go, living, living wood twig. And we've got the ingredients for the Rod of the Lance. Now, in order to use the Rod of the Lance, we need mana in our inventory. And we need to do that with a mana tablet. Now, a mana tablet comes from Living Rock and a mana diamond. So that's easy to make. We had that mana diamond from a moment ago. And now the this tablet is empty. And now to fill it up, we just need to throw it into a pool of mana, like this. And the pool needs to be configured to store mana in the tablet. You can see, if I shift right click on it with the wand, it, change, it reverses the order that the mana moves. Now it's putting it back into the pool. Now it's putting it on the tablet. And while it's happening, let's also take a look at another way of moving mana around. I've got some mana spreaders here. And if we put a mana spreader here, and let's see, let's put one here. They have to be within kind of sight of each other. And one here. I think 16 blocks is the maximum they can go. And if I just link these together, shift right click, shift right click, and shift right click and shift right click. And now we're moving mana in this, with these cascading mana spreaders. When you do this, they lose they lose some mana. All this uh, all these uh, particles you see floating around, I think that means that mana is getting that mana is getting lost. And it moves these basic mana spreaders move mana very slowly. But here is our almost full mana tablet, which is plenty for us. And now you can see when I'm holding a tablet in my XP bar, you can also see a blue bar there. And it tells you I don't have to have it in my hand or anything. You can see an indication there of how much mana you have. Now, the Rod of the Lens, very simply, makes dirt out of nothing, which is great for terraforming so you never have to go find a stack of dirt to do some terraforming and this is using up mana as it does also great for bridging so if you're bridging in the end you can make dirt bridges or the nether pretty cool so those are just a, a couple of examples of the rods and, and rings and other trinkets and things that you can get in uh, Batania. Just a whole bunch of really cool, really cool things. All right, I think that's a good place to kind of stop with, with the mechanics of Batania. Let's get a whole bunch of living rock to make the kind of this Batania base structure that I've, uh, that I've built in Creative, and I'm going to I'm going to place it with a schematic cannon. Actually, let's go take a look at that. We'll do that over here. I've kind of cleared out this space right here. And I'm going to put a schematic cannon down here. And I've got this schematic, my this Batania house schematic. And I've already crafted the material checklist. And then you take the blueprint 
and you kind of place it on the ground and you can position it like this. You've already got it positioned right there where you can where you can see it. Um, I'm not going to click, so it'll be a surprise because it will actually show the building. It'll actually show the building a preview of it. So I'm going to put this back in here. But to make this thing, I need a bunch of birch fence, uh, some chains, but I need like four stacks of chiseled living rock bricks, a bunch of cracked living rock bricks, flowering azalea leaves, 10 stacks of living rock bricks, so a ton of living rock. So I'm going to go off and get most of this stuff and, and fill this list off camera. But to get all that living rock, you can imagine that it would take forever to manually place those stone blocks eight at a time around each flower. And yeah, that would be a, a pretty tedious process to get stacks and stacks at this kind of pace. So instead, what we're going to do is automate the creation of living rock with create. And for, so for that, I've thought about a lot of different ways to do that with create, maybe, you know, generate some, um, generate a stone block right next to the pure daisy and then let that trans, let, let that transform it. And then based on, I don't know, redstone timer, break it automatically and do it like that. But I had another idea using a minecart contraption, a whole bunch of pure daisy, and we're going to create a whole bunch of living rock all at once. So let me pull together those materials to make that minecart contraption, and I'll be right back and we'll get it set up. All right, so I've collected a bunch of things, and in, again, instead of making a like a small, concise machine with a daisy that turns stone into living rock one at a time, I'm going to set up a contraption that strings together a whole bunch of daisies. So for example, let's do this as an example. Um, one, two, just kind of prototype it here. All right, so a cart will go, a, a cart contraption will go around here and I've, I've made a whole bunch of pure daisies. And if we put a bunch of these down, like three apart, and now if we send a contraption around here that places stones, stone blocks inside here, these daisies will convert them. And that same contraption that comes back around again can break them uh, because they'll be living rock by then. So if we kind of stick this contraption down right here, We want it to go, it's going to go in that direction. And normally when you're running a minecart on a rail, it needs a, a powered rail like every like five or six, but contraptions seem to be powered much, much more than that. So we'll start with just one and see if we can make it around the track. And now I want to make this long enough so that it takes a long enough time for the cart to, well, for the, for the stone to turn into living rock by the time the cart gets around a second time. Okay, now let's build the minecart contraption. So these things here, deployer there. Mechanical drill here. Now let's do it like this. Let's put the glue down first here and connect the and connect the drill to it. And we'll put the glue here and connect the deployer to that. And a barrel up. Let's put a barrel right here. Filter on 
stone, fill that with stone. And now if we look at this thing with glue, I think the deployer connects automatically to the chassis. So let's power this thing and, and let's pick it up and see. Now if we shift right click on the cart, we can pick up the whole thing. That works. Okay, I think we've got a, a good contraption that's all connected. All right, we just need to get the cart out of here. Actually, can I just push it? Yes. Okay, here it goes. It's going pretty slowly. The question is, is it going to stop? If I need to give it another boost. That's going really slowly. Let's give it another powered rail over here. I really feel like it's going to make its way all the way around once it gets some momentum. Let's see if I can get in front of it here. I'll give it a push with that. There it goes. Yeah, so going around the corners, it places some blocks. That's okay, but it's working. Now it is placing blocks and breaking the converted living rock. All right. It's gonna run out of stone. Let's turn this off to stop it as it comes through here next time around. And it should stop right here with the power off. Oh, the cart kept going. Why didn't the cart get powered by that one? I don't know. Oh, because I don't have powered rail on it. That's the problem. Okay, so what do we got? We've got a little over a stack. It broke some, it broke some stone instead of living rock. Let's fill this up with a bunch more and I keep hitting Q instead of my hotkey to open the wireless terminal. Um, that should be, I think, enough stacks to complete our build. So we just need to push this back through here again. Let's let's power this one. Powered rail. And I think this should do it. This on. We send our cart through. Fantastic. I don't know, by getting like 20 or more daisies going all at the same time, I think this is a great way to mass produce some living rock. And we can do the same thing by putting logs in there instead of stone and get living wood. And the transformation into Living Rock is well ahead of the cart. So it won't catch up with itself and start to break its own stone. All right, we'll let that finish. We'll collect the rest of our uh, ingredients for our Batania building. And I'll be right back and we'll build that.
Okay, we've got just about everything in these barrels. One more check with the book. This is pretty neat. When you put a book in there, it tells you what's what's now provided in the adjacent chests and barrels and things. So I've got everything except these Ars Nouveau lights, which apparently I captured some Ars Nouveau light uh, magical lights in this build. Um, I think we can just skip blocks we don't have, so it's not a big deal. All right, so I think that's that's it. We just need to supply gut powder and tell it to go. I have not built anything this big ever, so I'm kind of scared. Let's just do it. Go. Here it goes. Let's just stand up here and watch it build. I think it's done. Finished. All right. Let's check this out. I love how it did the lanterns last. All right. We've got a little bit of a stairway issue to deal with here. That's okay. I wanted it to be kind of hanging off the edge of the cliff here so we could see it from below. Inside, not much going on. I did put some kind of raised bed planters here. We're going to put botania flowers here. I'm going to build in here somewhere, maybe not right here, some automation for the petal apothecary and automation for the runic altar. Well, it's also kind of messing around with some stained glass. I was thinking of doing like all different kinds of stained glass around here, but I wanted to just kind of see what it was in like, what it was like in place before doing all that stuff. I'm pretty happy with this. So the schematic canyon is pretty amazing. I, you know, I, I built this in creative and, you know, I had no idea what this was going to look like when I started. And so I built it in creative, made a schematic out of it. I still had to get all of the materials. All right. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. We ended that one with something a little different. Uh, that was pretty fun, though. I think I will take that approach with some other big builds in this world. I, I like that process a lot. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Subscribe to the channel to keep up with the newest Valhalla 5 videos in the series. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time.